What's up guys, welcome to the first episode of Coach's Corner where we answer your questions. So the guys on the social media world have been shooting us messages through Instagram, been DMing us, and um, we have, uh, we're gonna be answering your questions. So, so these are gonna be uh, every week. Um, I'm Ash, I'm Ash Huggett. <laughs> Just in case you don't know okay. I'm Luke. Luke Beasley. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say my surname as well? Go on, say it. Go on. Say it. I'm Lenka. Lenka Suhangova. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you say it. <laughs> Repeat it. Sukhankova. Lenka Suhangova. 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 I'm Abby. Abby Rose Rowlack. <laughs> And I'm Steve. Steve Toe. <laughs> Steven? No, it's not Steven, but it's fine. Uh, and together? <laughs> <laughs> we are Squat Club. Okay, so uh, one of the first questions um, we received was, I just started tracking macros. What would be the best way to eat if I were going out at night? To a restaurant? Well, that was the only, That's what they gave us. Okay. So, I see. Mm, Abby, you go first. Okay. Ladies first. <laughs> I say space around protein and always include vegetables or salad. When you eat out? Yeah, like, it's always inv involves some, some form of vegetables, if you can. Yeah. Like, and obviously the protein is the most important part. But if, obviously, you don't have a chance to have just protein and vegetables, um, you just have to work around it the day before or just... Plan ahead. Yeah. Plan ahead. Mm. Yeah. And I guess if it's for macros and you are tracking, like some restaurants will have like their nutritional info. So if you really wanted to put in the effort, you could kind of gauge your what kind of macros you're going to hit at that place. Might maybe plan what you're going to order too. So mm. you could still get pretty close to your macros anyway. Yeah. If, yeah. If you're um, if you're cutting as well or in a deficit, I think you should overestimate. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. if you're bulking or trying to put on weight, underestimate, so then that way it's in line with your goals as well. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that way you're not going to go over or under. And yeah. then, yeah. Or we'll just make sure that through the day you've hit your protein needs and then if yeah. you're going out for dinner, then you get your carbs and fats at dinner. Yeah, yeah that's what I used to do. I used to always uh, opt for like the lean meats. I would always, even on, like if I was going out in the night when I was tracking and I was um, getting quite lean, I would... I would opt for protein shakes because they were convenient for me because they had low fat, low carbs, and I was trying to get my protein up. Um, and then I would have vegetables to then then accommodate for a lot more like sweeter stuff or whatever was coming up that night. That way I could, you know, still hit my goals with um, hitting like my protein take, but not sacrificing my social life. Mm. So if you want to be really strict as well, you can like ask for sauces and stuff on the side. Yeah. Because the chefs don't really care about your. Nutritional goals. No, that's right. Those, those put in whatever. So yeah. if you're really strict, you can always do that as well. Yeah, that's the thing as well. Like if you're tracking, if you're tracking macros, and you're going out, you're putting, you're putting your meal, what your intake is, in someone else's hands, and they're not going to be uh, measuring out, you know, like what you do. So yeah, like what, like we said, the best thing to do is try and put things on the side. That way, then you have a bit better, better gauge. And that comes with experience. Mm. Well. Yeah. I always try and like watch the restaurants that I pick as well, like where I'm going to go eat, which I know is not always viable depending on Grilled. who you're going out with. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but try and pick good restaurants that you can yeah. pick a good meal. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, I've hit a plateau with my results and training. What do you suggest I do to break it? Mm. Good question. Mm. Probably mix up some kind of variable, so it might be probably big, two biggest things, volume or intensity. Um, play around with like mixing them up, undulating them, and then um, try and progress that way. Mm. Probably one quick thing you could do. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess you've got to kind of actually know how much volume and intensity you're doing. So if you're just coming in and just doing whatever, yeah. and you're not even tracking your workouts, yeah. then how are you going to know how much volume and intensity you're doing? You're just going to definitely yeah. plateau. That's a big thing. I think tracking... Tracking is key, so you know if, if you're hitting the plateau, maybe you're not tracking your workouts, um, and you're not like, obviously you're not going to be progressing in, in that way too. So you can even look at like progressing the volume that you're lifting, um, and if it's to do with results as well, 
uh, maybe looking at trying to tighten up things like if you are tracking your macros maybe like dropping down um, your your intake or looking at trying to um, increase your energy outtake as well so like starting to use tools like cardio and, and conditioning workouts as well to try and you know get break out of that plateau I think sometimes also um, changing the extra training mm. if you're doing hypertrophy for a long time maybe start doing, doing strength instead and the opposite mm. um, it would help as well mm. it's all about adaption as well the body adapts if it's staying the same and you hit that plateau it's a good chance you're adapted so you need to change a stimulus somewhere mm -hmm. it can be through probably exercise selection volume intensity um, and yeah, just like changing those variables. And like Ash said, nutrition, like if you're training hard and your nutrition's shit, they kind of go hand in hand. So there's no point saying, oh, well, how can I fix my training? Maybe you should look at the nutrition first. And it depends on your goals as well, what you actually want to achieve. Like if you're trying to get massive and build muscle, but you're in a deficit and then you're just doing strength training, it's, it's, not, gonna, it's not gonna happen. So you gotta look at the goals as well, I think and actually what you're trying to achieve with your training because it's an optimal way to do things. So mm -hmm. I think that's important mm -hmm. as well. Here's a good one. This is probably pretty frequently you, you see this. Um, are there any benefits to fasted cardio? No. I don't think so. No. No, no, so I think overall energy balance is more yeah. important. Yes. That's yeah. the, the bigger picture. That's I think the, bigger picture. the biggest thing is that people think it's because they're fasted that they'll be using their body fat instead mm. of like whatever food they consume. So I think that's the biggest thing that why people do ask that question. Yeah, so you can see why. I can yeah. see why people. Yeah, like the logic that. behind it. Yeah, thinking that, but yeah, mm. but really in it that depends. sense, not really. Yeah. yeah, it depends what kind of cardio um, yeah. you're doing. Mm. Um, so if you do steady state, then you're more more likely going to use the fat mm. um, in your body. Your right um, Yeah that's more important than doing it fasted. Yeah. Mm. And again, like you gotta think of the bigger picture. So being in this net caloric deficit, that's what's gonna so that's what's gonna lose body fat. Mm. Not going into, you know I guess I think it also comes down to personal preference as well. So if people don't like eating in the morning um, and they like to go and train, then that's I think that's fine. Yeah. But if they like to, to eat breakfast or something like that as well before training, then do that too. So I think it kind of goes to your personal preference, but there is no benefits to fasted cardio. Yeah, it's got to kind of, fly and it works best for you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Knocking these ones off pretty fast. <laughs> All right. Uh, Natural then. Meal timing. Is it important? Um, it depends what your goals are, um, obviously what your training history is, what your medical history is. Um, if you are healthy and you just want to lose a bit of a fat, um, it probably is not as important. Um, but if you're trying to get healthy, um, it is important because of um, insulin levels in your body. If you eat every three hours, the insulin levels will stay pretty much the same. Where if you don't eat for a long period of time, you obviously will fluctuate. Yeah. Mm. And it depends on the individual. Like, if you're more experienced in your training, you're always looking for those one percenters. I think meal time is important, especially protein. Yeah. You want that spaced out through, throughout the day for muscle protein synthesis. But if it's just general, if you're just starting to weight training or in the gym, it shouldn't be one thing like, oh, checking the clock three hours I have to eat it's just yeah. the bigger picture yeah. like again energy balance is probably yeah. more important that's right but yeah. if yeah but yeah. for me for example I prefer eating my carbs around my workout for energy like that's yeah. where meal timing comes in for most people that's when you start to play meal time as yeah. well but just as a guideline I'll probably say protein spaced out throughout the day is yeah. the biggest thing mm. fats and carbs you could play around with a little bit more yeah I think it's more about crossing the T's and dotting the I's mm. more mm. yeah you know it is probably a more advanced thing, like Luke said, it might become important if mm. like, you're competing or something like that, but yeah, depends on where, at like what stage you are in terms mm -hmm. of yeah. like building your health, so I mean if you're just starting off and trying to get on track, maybe just first get that routine first, yeah, rather than mm -hmm. stressing over like timing and everything and mm -hmm. like anabolic windows, like 20 yeah. minutes shake after the workout, <laughs> you know, like get, you know, build routine and start, you know, go crawl before you walk, so um, yeah. I think time is probably a bit more advanced, um, but I think the other thing you have to think of too is energy levels. 
Like if you're not eating for the whole day yeah. or skipping yeah. a lot of meals and your energy's not there, you're not going to be motivated to train or you yeah. might not be. So think about how you're feeling through the day. Are you yeah. feeling energetic and is eating regularly or you know, yeah. your timing going to make a difference to that? Yeah. Yeah. And eating food around the workout does make a difference. Like you see yeah. all the time, if people haven't eaten before, yeah. their energy is a bit lower, their, their workout's yeah. a little bit yeah. like not as intense, and it makes a big difference in that yeah. aspect. Yeah. Well, their mindset. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, food is energy, so. And if you have a big car, meal, you're just ready for sleep. <laughs> <laughs> save, that, save that for dinner. <laughs> All right, so uh, the next one was, uh, what are your thoughts on high and low carb days and when would you use them? Um, I think, this is a good question, um, I think that this one would be a tool to use when um, your calories are starting to go lower. So, end of the day, to, in, in terms of, I guess, for fat loss here for this reason, um, you, would, you would use this towards the latter end of your cut and um, basically, your, your net intake for the week is going to be far more important. So whether, let's say for instance, it's 14,000 calories at the end of the week that you need to get to, um, the way that you get there is, is that's the end goal. So you could have two high carb days and then five lower carb days, which is going to help with adherence, um, especially in the dining phase as well. So if your, your, your carbs are down really low for seven days a week, it's really hard to keep following that. So trying to break that up every couple of days to go into a high carb day to help with, I guess, not feeling like you're dieting as well. So that's going to help a lot. So, but, but by the end of the day, like your net calorie intake is going to be a big picture. And that's the reason why you would use high and low carb days. Yeah. Yeah. I think that can be important for weekends too. Like oh, if you're definitely. going out and it's a lot harder, so mm. you can save your carbs for the weekend and then it's not throwing yeah. the whole week out. So if you're looking at, at it across the week. So yeah. I think that's adherence. Yeah. I used to use it a lot, easier. like even for myself, like I would do it on a Tuesday. Um, remember that when I was in uh, yeah. City? So it would be Tuesday would be lower body day and I would love the cinnamon scrolls that were like 56 grams of carbs. And so I would factor my high carb days around that day and then also Saturday so I could go out to like grill to somewhere for dinner because it was more of a social thing too, you know. Yeah. But I was still hitting my intake for the end of the week. Mm. And I think social is important when it comes yeah. to yeah. like going out and not being too strict on yourself in that. So being yeah. able to make it work in. Mm. So. Mm. I think yeah. it helps as well because like being in a deficit, like you're going to be hungry and it is psychologically <laughs> taxing. Yeah. Like being in a deficit means you have less energy, you know what I mean? So you're going to be hungry and that feeling of hungry is just like being hungry. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Yes. That's the worst feeling. That's the, that is the worst <laughs> feeling. But it's, it's hangry. I hate being hungry. But yeah, like you're going to be hungry and like that's hard to sustain seven days, 14 days, like and continually do that. So I think high carbs can help there yeah. as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Because mm. every day doesn't happen in a vacuum. So those high carb days aren't going to totally ruin everything yeah. you've done. And mm. ruin, you know, Same thing. Just getting it, you know, mm. out of shape already. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Plus also if you've got heavy days in your training, for example, and yeah. you are in deficit, and I used to I used to do it as well with my first cut. Mm. I had Tuesday and Thursday were my high carbs and I did the heaviest um, trainings. Yeah. I think the other thing too is some days get you hungrier than other days too. Yeah. You want to eat more, so yeah. <laughs> save yeah. your carbs for those days. Yeah. You'd be like, I just want to eat more, but then the next day make sure that maybe you cut that back a bit. Yeah. Alright, so uh, what's better for fat loss? Cardio V weights. <laughs> v V <laughs> Get that close. What does that stand for? Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> um, cardio. <laughs> I, think, I don't like it, but that's my opinion. Like, I think you can lose body fat without doing any cardio, mm -hmm. but it's definitely a useful tool in the overall process to increase overall energy expenditure. So, obviously, just your daily activities like walking, sitting here, we're burning calories, but that's a useful tool as well. But I got pretty lean without doing any cardio. Mm. No, no cardio at all. It's also because you are very active. Yeah, um, yeah. And like it's different. So, I think everyone should first build their aerobic capacity um, and then obviously start weight training. But I'm not saying that you should be just running. You should probably do both combinations. Yeah, yeah. The combination. Mm. Um, weights will work better and most likely faster. Um, but 
cardio is important as well. Yeah. I think you've got to put it in context as well. So what your goals are. If you're, if you're trying to do bodybuilding, then maybe cardio is not a thing. But if you're a complete beginner and you're starting out in the gym, then I think cardio definitely yeah. is It's very helpful part. not to look at it as they each other. You know? yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. trying to get energy expenditure, expenditure yeah. or like move an activity in, into your lifestyle yeah. um, in comparison with how much food you consume. I guess if you're starting out and if fat loss is your question, then yeah, was maybe fat don't loss? look at it yeah. as yeah, like it's a fat loss. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe don't look at it as strictly adverse, it's one or the other. Like yeah. You can combine both and you know. Yeah. But also, um, like weight training is more important. If you do only cardio, um, yeah. you're never gonna look um, as good as if you do both, I would say, because you're not gonna build muscle. Yeah. muscle. Yeah. Yeah. And you're gonna burn muscle with yep. only cardio. So exactly. weights are more important, mm. but you should do both. I think from a ratio perspective, like say four to two or something like that. Yeah. Or three to two if you're a beginner setting up. Yeah. Or even two two, depending yeah. on your days that you want to train. Yeah. yeah. But as well as that, like you want to prioritize your weight training. Um, cardio is a tool there to assist you. And then that's where when things slow down, if you've already dropped your calories down um, and your results are starting to slow down, that's when you would look to implement a little bit further more cardio, you know, or you're looking at doing like a conditioning workout or something like that. But yeah, definitely prioritize weight training. But getting and a it's combination. Much more fun, probably. Oh, for most people, oh yeah. Instead of, you know, uh-huh. just, just walking in straight to the treadmill. Five hours. Yeah, yeah. Treadmill. So, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, final question, uh, carbs before bed, will it store as body fat? This one time I ate carbs before bed and I woke up five kilos <laughs> 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 A little disappointing. <laughs> so everyone's been talking about it. And that's true. What carbs was it? <laughs> it was just, uh, had chocolate and had some <laughs> chips. <laughs> five kilo heavier. No, but. That, that's a joke, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think like, that. to be fair, it's pro- it is a myth. Um, reason being, like, it, it's good reason though. People think like, okay, you eat food, you're going to go to sleep, you're not, yeah. you're not, burning, you're not burning the, the calories. Energy, so yeah. I can see where the argument has come from. I can see that. But I don't think it's going to typically store as body fat. Um, when, when you're sleeping, your metabolic rate is going to be the same as when you're resting. Like if we're sitting oh, here right now, yeah. so your metabolic rate is going to be very similar. So it doesn't store as body fat. I would consider looking at when you actually have your dinner, like having it, say, four hours before you go to sleep. It doesn't matter if that's carbs or protein, like just your dinner. Just I would say it's more, more because of the quality of sleep than mm. it's not yeah. going to store as a body mm. fat. It's I, more, yeah, like you, your sleep will yeah. be better if you eat. Yeah, so there's, there's actually like research on that and how actually carbohydrates actually improves mm. sleep quality. Like, don't quote me on it, but siestas. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm, Spanish like you, said, you said it before. So like you feel like increases your mood. I think you said. Yeah, like serotonin. Yeah, so yeah, it increases serotonin. serotonin and melatonin. And I think that's something to do with like if actually you can put like a little thing here. But it's like some amino acid that binds with in the insulin yeah. and that yeah. increases. Where do you want it? Just here? Just yeah. here. I don't know exactly <laughs> what it's called. But the, yeah, so yeah. then it increases serotonin and um, melatonin which helps you sleep and obviously serotonin makes you feel yeah. good. Like, good. And you get it overall, I think, yeah, you get a better sleep. Like that's yeah. good sources of carbs, not just go and eat like packets of chips yeah. and lollies mm. and stuff before yeah. bed. Yeah. Probably the low GI options I yeah. think are better. Yeah. But it helps with sleep quality and mm. I don't think it will make you fat. Just give time to digest before you go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you, need, yeah you need quality. to digest as yeah. well. I think that's where like why carb is better is because fats and proteins generally take longer to digest. Mm. It is, and then you, you don't want to be going to sleep and your food's digesting mm. as well. So mm. that'll just kind of disturb your sleep overall. Yeah. But again, remember, you just want to think about the bigger picture. You know, these are all, I guess, smaller, minor things that are not going to, I guess, hinder um, your progress. If you're getting the bigger picture done, you know, these are like all dotting the I's, crossing the T's. So um, net calorie balance is, or the, the calorie balance is going to be, you know, the big part of it. So if you're going to be in a calorie deficit, then, you know, you're going to be losing body fat. So that's it, guys. Good job. Yeah, well done. Um, okay, so yeah, basically the first episode, and uh, if you've got any other questions, what we're doing is we're shooting them over to our Squat Club Instagram page, so shoot over there, send us a message, we're going to be doing these every single week, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one, next week. <laughs>
Why? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>